Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, lily of the valley, bright and morning star, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, he's the God of every nation, bless his name, oh how I love him, how I love him, lily of the valley, Bright and morning star, how I love him, how I love him. He's the God of every nation, bless his name, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. Lily of the valley, bright and morning star, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. He's the God of every nation, bless his name. How I love him, how I love him. Lily of the valley, bright and morning star. How I love him, how I love him. He's the God of every nation, bless his name. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. Lily of the valley, bright and morning star, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. He's the God of every nation, bless his name. How I love him, how I love him. Lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, how I love him. How I love him, he's the God of every nation, bless his name, oh praise God, we praise and magnify God this evening, thanking God for being in the house of the Lord one more time, amen, this uh, Wednesday night Bible study, amen, we come that we might see what God has to say in his word, praise God, we need God's word tremendously, in our lives. Without it, we won't make it. Praise God. His words come to lift us and comes to comfort us and comes to hold us if we would allow it to. And so again, we thank and praise God for you who may have turned aside on tonight. And we invite you, amen, to get your Bibles and cut on your personal devices, pull up your Bible programs, and let's go into the Word of God on tonight. We're going into Romans, the 8th chapter, verses 28 through 29 is what we're going to attempt to, but I don't think we're going to go through all that. Just a portion is going to be a continuation. There is a lot going on here uh, in Romans 8, just these few piece of verses. Uh -huh. And our theme for the night is safe in God's love. We can find comfort. We can find safety in God's love. And so while we're going to our uh, location of our book on tonight, we want to say thank you. Thank you to those who came out Sunday afternoon uh -huh, and met us at Harvest Time Church of God in Christ for our celebration. Praise God. Amen. In ministry, 21 years, we thank God. Amen. For those who showed up, amen, in support and those that supported us and couldn't make it. We thank God for you, for your love and for your kindness and your prayers. We had an awesome time. And so I was just so happy, praise God, in the outcome of our 21 years of celebration. God has been good to us and we've touched lives, amen, all the way from California to here in Texas and far and beyond. But we thank the Lord for the opportunity to be able to say a word for him. Not everybody want to say a word for God, but God has touched our lives and he's, uh -huh, he's transformed our minds and our hearts. And so we can't do nothing but talk about the goodness of God and what God has done and what he is doing right now in our lives. Praise God. If he don't do nothing else, Praise God. He brought me this far, safe and sound. And so we're praising and we're magnifying God for those who came out. And I want to tell you thank you, thank you, thank you again for your support. Now, there may be some who would like to support this ministry, and you can through Cash App. Yes. Under the heading City of David Church Houston, 
And our Cash App ID, well, you got it on the screen. It's dollar sign, COD Church, Houston, the number seven. Amen. I guarantee you that if you support this ministry, amen, the Lord will richly bless you. Why? Because he said, give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. And so we ask that you would also drop us a line at church the number seven, at gmail.com. And we invite you also to go to our YouTube channel and peruse it, and we pray that there will be something uh, said there that would help you along your journey. And so, again, we're going over to Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans, the eighth chapter. Safe in God's love. Hmm. safe in God's love. And as we begin to read Romans, the eighth chapter, beginning at verse 28 through 39. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Hmm. For whom he did foreknow. He also did predestinate to be conformed, ah, to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Mm. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. He does the glorifying. He does the calling. And he does the justifying. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not? With him also freely give us all things. Circle that in your Bible. Give us freely, give us all things. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearers of his word. Safe in God's love. One thing about this, Paul begins to encourage those who are in Rome. Yeah, they, they were going through great persecution and uh -huh, they were going through great turmoil. And so they, their struggles were great. And so Paul here begins to encourage the saints down in Rome, begins to let them know how God loves them and how God cares for them. Therefore, man views many problems as really being one supreme problem. How to get right with God? That's the question. 
If he can't establish the right relationship with God, he feels sure God will help him through his trials and take care of his future thereafter. This is the very message uh, of Romans. Man's need to get right with God. For he is under the condemnation and wrath of God. You can find that in Romans 1, 18, 1, 18 through the third chapter, the 20th verse. Man needs a right relationship with God. He needs to be justified. Mm -hmm. That is, declared righteous by God. Mm -hmm. He needs to be declared righteous by God. Mm -hmm. And so this is not, Paul said, this was not done in a corner. So those that want to make themselves righteous and ask, who are we to judge? We, we have God's word on our side that we might understand and realize that if any man be in Christ, come on, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Your life should be changed once you meet Christ. Man needs to be freed from the struggle of sin. For sin corrupts and leads to death. Romans 6, 1 through 23. For the scripture says, for the wages of sin is what? Death. So We don't go around doing our own will. We're doing the will of God. And the only way we're going to be able to completely do the will of God that's through the spirit of Christ when he comes into our life and makes us a new tree creature because the scripture says uh, uh, the, the spirit of God the comforter shall lead you and guide you into what all truth and what is truth God's word so we have God's word to keep us aligned man needs to be free from the bondage of the law Spiritual legalism for the law, check it out, and don't get too happy. Don't get too happy because we get misaligned with this. It says, for the law enslaves, it accuses, it condemns, and strikes hopelessness within the heart. It's Romans 7, 1 through 25. The law was put there that it might point to sin because if we didn't need a law we wouldn't know what sin was come on that's why uh -huh, when we deal with the natural side of man that's why we have a stop sign because the what the law says you got to stop huh that's why uh we have speed limits because uh come on come on the law yeah says that there's a certain speed in certain areas and so while you're not breaking these natural laws, we should not be breaking God's laws. And that's why he sent the spirit of his son, that he might dwell in us. God said that I'm going to put my laws in your heart and in your mind. Why? Because man needed something to keep him. He couldn't just do it. That's why they offered up sacrifice every year. So the law points to and it enslaves. But it only points to and enslaves, come on, when you in sin. When you in sin, the law points directly at you. You can't say, well, don't point at me. No, you've been caught in adultery. That's sin. You with another man's woman. And then in most cases, uh, uh, you, you committing fornication. That's just, that's just a couple. And so the law will enslave. It will accuse you. But for us... Yeah, the scripture says that the law is for the lawless. For those that are doing the right thing, we don't need a law. Why? Because we're doing the right thing. We don't need a law to point at us because according to God's word, we're following it. It says, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Romans 7 and 24. It says, God assures this, 
Nothing, absolutely nothing, shall prevent God's settled plan and purpose from coming about in the life of the believer. Nothing. There's nothing going to come against the plan of God for the believer. Mm -hmm. The believer, that, that's the, the, the faithful one. That's, that's the one who's given his life over. I'm not talking about those that are just walking around with signs, talking about I'm a Christian. No. He's talking about those who have given up the life of sin, those that have laid down sin and say, I'm going to follow Christ. I'm going to follow you, God. Yeah. Yeah. And it's only for the believer. It says, God's settled plan and purpose for the universe shall be consummated. God, God going to have the last say so. It's going to all come together. Why? Because God's got a plan. And if God is all powerful, he's all knowing, it's going to come together. We hear people all the time trying to mock God's word. Oh, yeah, he's coming soon. We've been hearing that for years, trying to mock God. But we, we, we don't really know the scripture, and that's why we mock, because it says that a thousand years is as a day unto the Lord. So when you look at the scripture, we haven't been through many days. We think we have according to man's mind. That's the problem. The problem is, is that we have to remove our stinking thinking and allow God's word to saturate our heart that as long as he delay is coming, as long as he give me this much of life, that during my time, I'm here on earth, I'm going to make a difference in the amount of time, in the allotted time that he's given me. I'm going to do what I can do. I I'm going to work, amen, while it is day. He said, because when night comes, no man shall work. He has determined two supreme things. Here it says, believers shall be conformed to the image of his dear son. See, that, that just gives us boop, a black eye for those who want to live these raggedy lives and still say, well, I'm a Christian. Or he, he, here's one. I'm a non-practicing Christian. Ain't no such thing. Either you're saved or you're not. Yeah. Ain't no such thing. You can't find that in Scripture. We live by the very word of God, not in these sayings that we want to invent that we might be comfortable in our sins. That's not God. Mm -hmm. He said, no, not a dot or a tittle of the word shall pass. So we, we can't change it. Yeah, we can't move things out of line. And so here, he says, that's found in uh, Romans 8 and 29. 8 and 29 says, for whom he did foreknow. Yeah, he foreknew us while we were in our mother's womb. He says, he also did predestinate to be conformed. Those that God calls. See, not everybody not everybody accepts the call because there's a universal call always going out to the universe. Yeah. What did Jesus say? He says, come unto me, all ye that labor in a heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. So it's a universal call. But when he calls you, he expects you to answer. But, 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 but check it out. And he expects you to conform. Uh-huh. Conform to what? To the image of his son. My God from heaven. God expects everyone that names the name of Christ to conform to his son. How do we know his son? We know his son through what? Through the word of God. Hello. And so, yeah, I, I, I know. I hear folks saying, you know, stuff dropping my spirit as I'm going through, and I got to talk about it. You know, folks say, well, this was written by so-and-so, and this was written by so-and-so. But I want to let you know that this is the unadulterated word of God. 
the word of God that changes lives. Yeah, just ask that alcoholic whose lives has changed. Just ask that dope addict whose life has changed through the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask the abusers of individuals how their lives have changed. So it says that we should be conformed. We, we should be modeled, molded in the image of his son. When the world or the sinner man sees us, that's why we're so condemned. The church, yeah, the church. Because we say one thing and we do another, and then we're actually a stumbling block to the world. We say we saved and we'll cuss somebody out like, like it ain't nobody business. It's like, what? We're supposed to be new creatures in Christ. We're supposed to be changed. And here's the other issue. We allow the naysayers to have more voice in our lives than we do the word of God. Let me say it again. We allow individuals who don't even care for God to have more voice than God. Why don't we just stand back and let God speak? Folks say, I wouldn't serve a God. You don't have to serve him. But I want to plead to you tonight, if you're hurting and you're going through, you need Jesus. If you're tired of your situation, you need Jesus. If you tried all that you could and it didn't work, here it is tonight, try Jesus. As you conform to Jesus, and God looks down and see the imprint of Jesus on your life, he'll begin to work for you. So he says, conform to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. That's Christ. He's at the top. That he might be the firstborn, yeah, of many brethren. That's us. Us who grafted in. Us who have come after him. Praise God. It says here, his son shall have Many brothers, and we talked about it, among whom he is to be honored as the first, the most preeminent person, Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's not Hail Mary, I'm sorry. It's Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus, Son of God. That he might be honored because you know what? It's he that died for the world. Nobody else died for the world. Yeah. No one else died for the world. So why would we give honor? Why would we give honor to individuals who have not died for us? I was just looking at a... Um, I think it was on Facebook. I was just looking at a Facebook page, and I guess there was, a, and, and, and I don't know how true it is, but I'm going to tell you what I've seen and, and tell you what was written. And so it, it showed that uh, uh, Putin, Vladimir Putin, w was honoring one of his soldiers, and, 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 and the picture showed that he was standing in the rain without an umbrella, and he was getting all wet, and then, uh, in the caption it said, or in the right of the article, was saying that, he says, this man died for us. He served his country well. He said, I'm not sugar, and he said something else. And he said, why do I need an umbrella? I, I can surely get wet. This man paid the ultimate price. So many words. So the same thing with Christ. If he paid the ultimate price why aren't we serving him? It's strange how we try to honor him, but what we do is we honor him to, you know, in, in the face of folk, and then we go and do our dirt, and we're stabbing him right in the back. He said, I thought you were, you were born in the image of me, but I'm stabbing me in the back. How am I stabbing you back? The Bible says when we commit sin willfully, we, amen, we, we kill him afresh. We do it all over again. Wow. And so it behooves us that we would be individuals, saints of God, believers, 
who would be conformed to the image of God. It says here, assurance, call. It says, God works all things out for those who love him. Here, here, here's the issue. Here's the issue. And we've seen it so many times. We have spousal abuse in its, in its, in its barest natural form. And, and all of a sudden that person that does the abusing says, I love you. And then they abuse you again for whatever reason. And then they'll abuse you again. And I, but I love you. When we love God, it says all things work to get work, all things, all things, God works all things out for those, for those who love him. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And so if we love him, we're going to do the right thing. We're going to honor him. You know, we, we, we talk about, um, we see very, various posts that women uh, uh, talking about uh, their, their, the, the male honoring the woman. But then that, both, that goes both ways. It just don't go one way. And so in that, we find that when you love somebody, you will give them honor and you will give them respect, whether female or not. Because somewhere or another, the female uh, acts as though she could say whatever to the male, and then so he's knuckling down and have to absorb that. That's not real love. Love is talking about our situations. Love is dealing with our situation. And not only that, as a team, husband and wife, working through it as a team. It says, um, what a concept. It says, Scripture actually declares that all things work together for good to the believer. Hello, believers. When you begin to believe God and you begin to follow, amen, the things of God, you're going to go through some things, but I want to let you know he's going to work some things out for you. Stop crying, woe is me. You're going to have to go through some things. I heard uh, Bishop Macklin in California of uh, Glad Tidings uh, International. He said, um, he said, everything you're going to get from God, you got to fight for it. And that's so true. Israel had enemies along the way that they had to fight in order to get to the promised land. Why? Because the enemy goes to and fro as what? A roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so in our lives, there's many a battles that we're going to have to fight. There's many a things we're going to have to deal with. But that is why we have God on our side. Yeah. When we're safe in the confines of God's love, uh, he said, I would not put more on you than you can bear. So if you're going through a situation that you did not cause, and the enemy caused it, God's going to give you the grace to go through it. Now, sometimes we call some stuff and, and Lord, help us because we caused it. But as God has called us, and he, he's called us, and we are the chosen of God, we're going to go through some things that we might, amen, see uh, the miracles of God. Uh, somebody asked the question, who did sin? The son or the parents? Jesus said none of them did. It was only done that, that God's glory might be, be uh, God's miracles might be glorified, or that God might be glorified and edified. So sometimes we go through that God may be edified and that God may be glorified when we come out of the fire. Yeah. When we come up out of the lion's den and God has shut the mouths of the lions all night long and praise God, would it seem like an all night long, no matter whether it's a day or month, six months or years, when we come out, amen, we come out like pure gold, but God gets the glory. My God from heaven, God gets the honor and he, he gets the glory. Why? Because he helped us and he walked us through the journey. But that's only for those who love him. He wants us to love him. 
it says, to the believer, it says, to get all things work together for the good to the believer. Nothing could be, could nothing could assure the believer any more than God working all things out for his good. There it is. God will show up when you need him. God will come through. He'll touch individuals' hearts when you need him. But it's like, are we living for him? He said, if you deny me, I'm going to deny you before my father. And that's why so many uh, Christians struggle is because they're trying to be secret agents for God. Yeah. Well, I won't tell nobody who, who that I'm a Christian because I don't want to go through nothing. So I'll just act like them. Wrong. That's denial. Woohoo. We don't deny God. Yeah, it said over in the lesson, we haven't got there yet, but we read it. It says, what shall separate us from the love of God? And what we do is we deceive ourselves and we deceive the world. I'm not a, I, I'm a Christian on Sunday, but Monday through, well, uh, Sunday and Wednesday, but the other days of the week, I'm like everybody else. That's deceitful. I'm married except for the days that, you know, the club is open free. Uh, was it Thursday night or whatever? Yeah, yeah. I'm a Christian except for Thursday nights. Yeah, late ladies' night. And then Friday night, whatever the nights are. But then after that, I'm a Christian. I'm, ooh, I, I'm straight and narrow, right. You're just a deceiver. You're a wolf in sheep clothing. But he says here, for the believer, he God will work out. Uh, he will work together for the good. Things work together for the good. Saints of God, don't give up and don't throw in a towel. And, and mind you, uh, let's take our eyes off the world and let's get our eyes on Jesus. Let us come back to the word of God that we might focus on the word of God. Praise God. Amen. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. I'm brand new. I'm a new creature in Christ. That means that I don't do what sinner mans do. I'm not talking about, don't, you know, I'm not talking about dumb stuff. Oh, yeah, you eat and you go to the uh, baseball game. and uh, Yeah, 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 I understand that. That's, that's stupid and idiotic. But I'm talking about the things that offend God. Baseball don't offend God unless you go always, you know, unless you, you know, missing God, missing church. You know, you do more of the world than you do God. But God's going to work things out for the believer. God is going to work it out for sure. The words, all things go well beyond the great event, events of the world. God does control the events of the world, but he controls much more. Wow. Matter of fact, when we look at it, before we get there, he was the creator of the world. Go back and look at Genesis. He created the heavens and the earth. And here we are trying to be bigger than God. And we barely get up and go to work in the morning. We ain't invented nothing. Yeah. And so looking at that, how much more do we look at God and give him glory and honor for creating, come on, me? Oh, my God. Scripture says we, we're wonderfully created and made. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's how he made and designed us. It says it's much more. He rules over all things. All the events and the happenings that occur in life of the believer. God is running things. But for the believer, that's why Jesus said that the comforter will lead you and guide you. Again, I still hear this in the back of my mind. We can't listen to naysayers. If you're a baby saint and you're listening tonight, I want you to get in your word and you start asking God. Start seeking the Lord in his word because there are just some folk you just can't trust. 
Now, if you know these folks got good reputation, go ahead. But you need to get into this word for yourself. Allow God that he might come and he might speak to you, that he might indwell in you. Praise God. Amen. Because he is the ruler of all things. Well, you know the same old song folk been saying, well, why is there so much corruption and why now? Well, disobedience. All you got to do is go out your front door. Look at folk that's disobedient. Yeah. There's disobedience all around. You name it and it's going on. Yeah, we got trafficking, we got drugs, we got shootings and killings. People doing hateful things to one another. On your job, they're doing hateful things. Even in your family, doing some hateful things and really. But we have to realize that the word of God says, what did it say? That the devil is the prince of the air. Did you read that? The devil himself, it says, he goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But mind you, when we come back and we look at the plan of God and look at uh, how God has this tailored, that for the person that believes in God, that trusts God, he got their back. But for the person who's, you know, just a, a, a wolf in sheep clothing, you don't have your back. You're just a wolf. You're just trying to destroy lives. You're just trying to get over. But he don't have your back. And so that's why we have destruction because we have evil men and women, boys and girls, who are, who are just full of the devil. They seek to do wrong, to do damage. Yeah. And so as they seek to do wrong and do damage, that's the devil. That ain't God. Come on now. Yeah. God is love. God is peace. He's long-suffering. He's meekness. And all of a sudden, you, you want to ask the question, you know, why we have all what we have? Because we got the devil in us. Even in our homes, in our churches, wolves and sheep clothing, they're creeping in unawares, saying, you know, I'm a believer. But that's not how this works. But I want to assure you tonight, and I'm assured, that God cares about the believer. That we're safe in God's love. For God so loved the world. And so God extends his love to everybody. That's why Jesus said, don't worry about it. If they hate you, they just hating me. That's how that works. Oh, well, yeah, oh, bless God. We don't want to hear about that, that God stuff. Save it for Sunday. That's a hater. The Bible declares that we're supposed to talk about uh, the word of God in the morning, in the noonday, in the evening. While we're walking by the way. And it's only a non-believer who tells you, when to talk about God. Yeah. When you can and cannot talk about God. Even on your job, they'll cuss, cuss like a sailor. And don't you say nothing about Jesus. Oh, you're infringing then. Wow. Isn't that backwards? That don't make any sense. But you know what? Come on, let's just snap back to reality. Hey, the devil is rampant. Mm-hmm. And so when the devil is rampant, he's going he gonna to try to do whatever he want to do. But we're safe in God's love. It doesn't matter what's going on in our lives. It behooves us that we would give up the sin business and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior that we might what be safe in God's love, that we might abide in God. God, he says that if I abide in you and you abide in me, you can ask what you will. Abide means to take up residence. We want to just uh, name it and claim it, and we don't know God. We don't care to know God. We just want the benefits of God. Yeah. We just want what, what God, I just need, I just need this new job. I, I'm just, I'm trying to get this house and, oh, pray for me that I get this house. But, 
You, you ain't serving God. But you want somebody who's dedicated to God to go and pray that you might benefit from their labor. Wow, isn't that something? That's like going to work all week long and then I come home or don't even come home. Ain't got a home and I'm giving you my check. That's craziness. If I go to work, I want to benefit from my work, from my labor. And so you should too. Safe in God's love. You may have been treated wrong. That wasn't God. God wants the backslider. He wants mm -hmm, the sinner to come unto him that they might abide in his love. God wants you and God wants you to come back to him. But since a man wants to do it himself, God is not going to uh, make us robots. He says there's a choice to be made. And what choice do you choose? Everybody has this choice. Everybody can make this choice. But God says, I'm no respecter of persons. Yeah. Those that come to me, I will in no wise cast out. That's why Jesus said, come. Come unto me. So, I want you to get rid of all that you've gone through. Get rid of the heartache. Get rid of the hurt. Stop crying over spilled milk. Enjoy this new life and this new love that God has brought us into. Oh, yeah, I understand that you may have some scars and wounds. And, and I've got some scars from when I was a little boy and I fell. And I remember getting this one and I remember getting this one. Oh, there may be a scar there, but the scar is not going to hinder my life. Woo! My God, the scars are not going to hinder me. And not, they're not going to hinder me in loving God and him loving me. We're safe in God's love. So we're cutting off. We're going to continue this Sunday morning. Tonight, we hope something was said that would encourage you. If you're depressed, stop being depressed. If you're sick over a loved one, go to Jesus. Accept him as Lord and Savior and let him ease the pain. Because why? He can give us strength to endure. He said, when you're going through, I'll make a way of escape. But that's for the believer. There's benefits in serving God. And so tonight, we hope and pray that you would, wherever you are, that you would call on the name of the Lord, that you would ask God into your life. Lord, I'm tired of the sin business. I'm tired of going around in circles. I'm tired of this monkey on my back. I'm tired of this yoke around my neck. I need some relief. I'm tired of the void in my life. I'm searching and searching for love. And you're searching in the wrong place if you don't have Jesus. Something about God that he'll put his spirit in you and his spirit, amen, will cuddle you and will hold you. It'll give you strength. It will speak to you and let you know you can go on because I got you. So don't cry another tear. Get on up from uh, your disparities and let's allow God to love on us and then let's love on God. This is Pastor Jones at the City of David Church here in Houston, Texas. We pray and hope that something was said tonight that would encourage your heart. Listen here, dear hearts, in Hebrews 6 and 7, I believe, it says uh, uh, it is impossible. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. We got to have faith in this walk, and we have to trust God all the way. Paul said, what shall separate us? Don't let nothing separate you. Get that word and get in that word and allow God, amen, to speak and talk to you. Until Sunday morning at 1030. This is Pastor Jones from the City of David Church here in Houston, Texas. Wanting to say I thank you all again for all your gifts and all your love and prayers for our 21 years of celebration and ministry. From here all the way to California, thank you. 
And across the seas, thank you for your prayers. Praise God. Amen. We, amen, ask that you pray for because of Jesus ministries as we go in this weekend, amen, bringing the word of God to the lost, to the incarcerated. Pray for because of Jesus ministries that we would be effective, praise God, on the lives of those who need a second chance. Again, until Sunday morning at 1030, our prayers that the Lord's best would ever be yours. God bless you. Have a good night.